Yves Trudeau was the most prolific killer for the Hells Angels. The man would later go on to admit that he shot, stabbed, beat, and even blew up a total of 40 people. Some were innocent, while others were not. But how did this man come into this business? Let's take a look at his story. Yves Apache Trudeau was born on April 2, 1946 in Quebec, Canada. His youth was characterized by maltreatment from his father. He developed a precocious interest in firearms, anticipating his future as a contract killer with the Hells Angels motorcycle gang. Trudeau got a job in the chemical industry in the early 1960s where he learned skills that would later serve him well in his criminal career. In 1968, at the age of 22, Trudeau joined the Popeyes Motorcycle Club in Montreal's East End and his criminal career took off from there. The Popeyes were notorious for drug trafficking, prostitution, extortion, and theft, basic gangster activities. Trudeau was an exception even among bikers as noted by journalist and true crime author James Dubrow. But as Popeye's fortune and influence grew, other gangs made moves to usurp it, including the Devil's Disciples and Satan's Choice of Ontario. The ensuing bloodshed solidified Quebec status as one of the most dangerous regions for criminal organizations to operate in North America. In 1975, for example, after 15 of their members had been killed by other gangs, the Devil's Disciples broke apart. The violence also drew the interest of American motorcycle gangs eager to expand abroad, such as the Outlaws from Chicago and the Hells Angels from Los Angeles. Five of the ten Satan's Choice chapters, including the Montreal areas, reconciled with the Outlaws that summer of 1977. The Popeyes eventually followed Sue and became Hell's Angels members that December. By that time, Trudeau had killed four people, and it was rumored that he even beheaded one of his victims, which garnered him the nickname Apache. The young outlaw member he shot outside the pub in Montreal's Little Italy sparked a full-scale conflict, and within weeks of joining the Hells, he committed his fifth murder. In the 1970s and 1980s, Trudeau's career as a killer reached its peak. There was no concern for innocent lives as he gunned down his target in their houses and set bombs in their vehicles. Sadly, many men's significant others perished beside them. The public saw him as an expert on explosives, so they started calling him the Mad Bumper. After the Montreal Hells Angel chapter grew too large to manage in September 1979, a second Montreal area chapter was formed with many former Popeyes members. Laval, a northern suburb of Montreal, would become the North chapter, while Sorel, an hour and a half northeast of Montreal, would continue to serve as the provincial mother chapter. North chapter's independence was a failure. In the early 1980s, their renowned behavior, which included extensive cocaine usage, disdain for club regulations, and contempt for other criminals, became became a major problem. Trudeau's murderous ways were unabated by his cocaine use. Trudeau, a former Hell's Angel, was suspected of killing the grandmother of a cooperating ex-member and his wife in February 1980. Trudeau committed multiple homicides on behalf of the English-speaking Southwest Gang of Montreal, known as the West End Gang. Because of their strong relationship, the Hells and the Irish were able to transport vast quantities of drugs through the port of Montreal. Frank Peter Dooney Ryan, a prominent member of the gang, formally oversaw operations at the port. In January of 1982, the Hells were so close to Ryan that he ordered ordered them to kill three of their own members and one of their girlfriends. The three men, led by Dennis Kennedy, a founder of the Montreal Hells Angels and a former member of Popeyes, planned to abduct one of Ryan's children and use the ransom money to repay the coke money they owed Ryan. When Ryan discovered out, he threatened the Hells with losing access to the drugs he was importing unless they killed the idiots behind the plot. The four victims were gunned down and their bodies were dumped into the St. Lawrence. Before, Ryan had collaborated with Trudeau. Ryan had hired the biker not long before to kill Huey McGurnahan, a member of the gang who, in Ryan's opinion, had stolen narcotics money from him. While driving through Westmount Park on October 27, 1981, Trudeau exploded a bomb beneath McGurnahan's car. McGurnahan's legs were blown off in the explosion, and windows were smashed in the affluent area. His death occurred as he was being transported to the hospital. In a bizarre turn of events, O'Connor claims he was a neighbor at the time and heard the blast but had no idea what it was. It wasn't until he was researching his book that he realized the relationship existed. Three years later, though, Trudeau committed his most notorious murder for the West End Gang. Ryan was shot and killed by fellow West End gang member Paul April and his associate Robert Lalive on November 13, 1984. After hearing that April was begging about the murder at Ryan's burial, Alan the Weasel Ross contacted Trudeau and made plans for retribution. There wasn't much of a wait for Ross. Trudeau associate Michael Blass gave April a TV, VCR, and a video cassette tape of Hell's Angels Forever, a sham documentary made by the Manhattan chapter of the gang. 
at her 1645 de Mason View West apartment in the early hours of Sunday, November 25th. March was with Lalive and two other people. Trudeau waited until Blass had left the apartment before detonating a bomb in a television. According to De Champlain, eight other rooms in the Concordia University student ghetto were severely damaged in the explosion that killed four men. According to Trudeau, by that time, feelings between Soro and Lavelle were ice cold. The North chapter was not only consistently stoned on cocaine, but they were also keeping for themselves their fair portion of the $300,000 in speed sales to the West End gang. In a clandestine meeting held in March of 1985, the Sorel Mother chapter announced that the Lavelle chapter was in bad standing. Sorel made a hit list that included Trudeau and other North members for assassination. Some could retire while others could apply to work for Sorel. On Saturday, March 23rd, members of the Laval chapter were notified that a gathering would be held at the Sherbrooke chapter's clubhouse. They were instructed that their presence was required. On Sunday, March 24, the trap was sprung after convincing a few hesitant North members to travel from Laval to Lennoxville, wrapped in sleeping bags and shackled to concrete blocks. Viao and four other members of the North branch were shot to death. When they arrived in Sorel, their bodies were dumped in the river. While Trudeau was still in rehab, the Hells Angels offered him a deal. In exchange for killing two bikers who weren't at Lennoxville and the girlfriend of one of the dead bikers, they'd give him some cash and let him go. Trudeau didn't have much choice, so he gave in. He was kicked out of the Hells Angels Motorcycle Club and required to give up his bike and cover up his gang insignia tattoos. Well, instead of solving problems for the club, it began a series of problems that would result in a renewed gang war in addition to police arrest. Trudeau must have known that he didn't have much time left. As a result of his many adversaries, a reward of $50,000 had been placed on his head. But then, in April of 1985, he was arrested on a weapons charge and given a year in prison. And rescue came in the most unexpected form. A few months later, while still behind bars, Trudeau made a deal. He offered to testify against his old co-workers in return for leniency and a nice cell. In August of that year, at a coroner's request, he gave his first explosive public evidence. According to experts, the statement provided by Trudeau and two other informants would result in the conviction of around 19 Hells Angels, including four directly involved in the Lennoxville Massacre. That's all the time we had today, folks. I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon to remain updated about all our future videos. See you all next time.